Hi, I'm Willem, and it's great to be here again. Have you ever been in a situation where you felt like you were treated unfairly? When I was in school, we had a group project, and some of the members of my group didn't do their part. And in the end, we all got a bad grade, and I thought that was really unfair. When people are being hurt or treated unfairly, they need someone to stand up for them. Let's watch this God story and see Jesus do that. Today, our story is from the book of Mark. It's a story about the temple in Jerusalem, entrepreneurial priests, and a very upset Messiah. Jesus had been traveling and teaching with his disciples for three years. Over this time, Jesus had performed many miracles and had taught many people. His disciples had followed him everywhere and were learning how to teach just like he did. They even performed some miracles too. The religious leaders, however, were watching Jesus closely. They didn't understand the new message that he was teaching. Jesus was teaching everyone how to be loving and not just law-abiding, how to follow the spirit and not just the rules. But obeying the letter of the law was the most important thing for these religious leaders. Many times, they would ask Jesus difficult questions to see if he would say something that they could use to accuse him and arrest him. But Jesus always knew exactly how to answer. This made them even angrier because more and more people were listening to Jesus and getting excited about who they thought he was. Many people thought Jesus would be an earthly king that would fight against the Roman Empire and give people freedom. One day, as Jesus was making his way into Jerusalem, people lined the road waving palm branches and cheered as if he was a victorious king entering the city. But when he arrived and went to the temple, something happened that would make the religious leaders so angry that they would want to kill him even more. And that leads to today's story from Mark 11, verse 15 to 19. What's the difference between elephants and grapes? Grapes are purple. Hey everybody, Jared here again. It's great to see you. Hey, one time when I was in school, we had a substitute teacher. This teacher decided that I was the troublemaker in the class. Every single one of my friends thought it was absolutely hilarious and did everything they could to get me in trouble. But it was really unfair. I was a good kid. The teacher picked on me. It was a real nightmare the whole time. In this series, we've discovered that all the great people of the Bible point to Jesus, and that following Jesus is really hard, but it's so worth it. As we look at Jesus today, we're going to discover that Jesus loves the underdog. So that leads me to today's big idea. Jesus brings justice. First, let's get on the same page. What is justice? Justice simply means making things fair or right. Jesus' kind of justice makes sure that the weak and the outcasts get what they really need. Jesus stands up for them in a peaceful and loving way. So Jesus entered Jerusalem riding on a donkey. The people were so excited, they were hollering, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They welcomed Jesus as the one that they were waiting for. Then Jesus went that night to stay in Bethany, and the next day he went back to Jerusalem. Let's read what happened. Jesus entered the temple and began to drive out the people buying and selling animals for sacrifices. He knocked over the tables of the money changers and the chairs of those selling doves, and he stopped everyone from using the temple as a marketplace. Okay, what's going on here? Jesus was kicking out those people who were buying and selling in the temple. Who were these people? What were they doing there? What were they selling? These people were selling animals for the sacrifice. Well, it's not a bad thing in that culture at all, but they were doing it inside the temple courts, and previously they would have had to have done it outside of the temple courts. That's a big difference. Inside the temple courts was a big problem because that was the only place that the people who weren't Jews, the people known as Gentiles, could worship God. So, just to be clear, people who weren't born Jews, the only place they could worship God was inside the temple courts. But that's where they were selling all these animals. There was money, there was commotion, it was chaos. It would be impossible to worship God in that space. So Jesus goes in, he sees the unfairness, he sees the injustice and says, this is all wrong and it has to change. You see, Jesus wants all people to be able to worship God. There was no way that the Gentiles there could worship God with all that commotion. Jesus knew that it was unfair, so he needed to do something about it. So Jesus clears out those people and those things and tells them something that was written a long time before he was born. He said to them, 
The scripture declares, my temple will be called a house of prayer for all nations. That means everybody, Jewish people and non-Jewish people alike. But you have turned it into a den of thieves. So on top of these guys not making room for the non-Jewish people to worship, they were cheating everybody in the buying and selling of these goods. Jesus knew that there was more going on here than just a racial injustice. He knew that the cheating was not right and that he had to do something about it. But the really religious people were not happy with Jesus at all. When the leading priests and teachers of religious law heard what Jesus had done, they began planning how to kill him. But they were afraid of him because the people were so amazed at his teaching. That evening, Jesus and the disciples left the city. Of all the things that Jesus said and did, that probably ticked off the religious people the most. The buying and the selling in the temple was how they made a profit, and Jesus shut it down. They wanted to kill Jesus, but they saw that the crowds were really into him, and they were afraid of the people, so they decided not to do it at that time. Then Jesus and his disciples left the city. The religious leaders would get their way eventually and kill Jesus, but not before his time. But Jesus was doing what he was doing because he loved the people. Even though they were powerless, he wanted them to be treated fairly. Jesus turned the tables in the temple because he wanted everyone to worship him. Jesus wants to see that kind of fairness everywhere. He wants all of us to be treated fairly and have the opportunity to worship him. When it comes to our lives, we can be challenged to work for justice and fairness in, in everything we see around us. We can remind each other of how Jesus loves us and he works for justice and fairness in value for us all. And that's why today's big idea is Jesus brings justice. Thanks everybody, it's been fun. I'm Jared, we'll see you next time. Jesus stands up for the people who are outcasts or weak and he does this in a loving and caring way. Now, Alyssa's going to share a story of the time she went on an outreach to the Philippines and the impact this trip had on her life. Watch this. So when I was in the Philippines, I knew that I would see a lot of poverty and some really difficult and hard things, but I don't think anything could have prepared me for this one community that we ended up going to. In this community, it was a slum community, and it was on a beach. And often when you think of a tropical beach, you think it's like this beautiful, serene, kind of picturesque beach. But on this particular beach, these families had built their homes out into the water because this was the only place that they could find to live. And they built their houses into the water on stilts because if those stilts weren't high enough, then during high tide, their homes would flood. From afar, it kind of looked beautiful in this sort of ironic way that was colorful. And But when you got closer, then you could see this, these like pieced together homes. Yeah, like almost like they were falling apart. Like you could tell that when it rained, there might not be enough protection and things like that. And so you really started to see the heaviness and brokenness of this community. So as we spent some time there, we started seeing that the kids during low tide would go down onto the beach and there was this kind of muddy, sludgy water sand mixture on the beach and they were digging through and they started to explain that they were digging through for glass and shells and little pieces of garbage that they might be able to sell for a little bit of money. The injustice of this place started to weigh really heavily on me and even just looking at the adults in that community, a lot of them were just sitting there, not really doing a lot. And I started to think like, when you're living in poverty as an adult, it um, really weighs heavy on you. And there's this kind of sense of hopelessness of just, yeah, just really kind of living in this really harsh reality. So when I came home from the Philippines, the injustice of this place really continued to weigh heavily on me. And to see how we live in Canada in such privilege and we don't even realize it and often take it for granted, and yet there's this place in the Philippines and again, like this place I started to realize repeats itself all over the world in different countries. There's slums like this, even bigger ones, more children that live in places like this and it can get really, really overwhelming. And for me, I started to ask like, how could God allow such injustice to exist in the world? I started to reflect on this and understand that this isn't God's heart for the world, that he really desires to see justice in this world. And we see that through Jesus and through God's heart. And so 
Um, he's inviting us to be a part of bringing justice and restoration in this world. And he's not calling us to save the entire world because Jesus already did that, but he's calling us to do one thing and to do what we can to partner with him in bringing justice in this world. And so what I ended up doing is I sponsored a compassion child from that community in the Philippines. And for me, that was a way of just understanding that hey, I can't save everybody, and that's not what I'm called to do, but I can do one thing, and I can reach out to one child and start to make a difference in that way. I think justice is about realizing that God has put us in so many places and situations and put people in our lives where we might see something and say, that's not fair or that's unjust, and understanding how God is calling us to respond in those moments. And so maybe it's a kid at school who's always by themselves and they're lonely or gets bullied, and being able to step into that situation and show God's justice by being a friend to a classmate, or maybe it's someone that really struggles with school and you're saying like, oh, it's so hard hard for them and to be able to understand like, hey, I have something that I can help them with and to be able to respond in that way. And that's really how we can bring God's justice in our everyday lives by showing kindness and um, being loving in our everyday lives. I'm Alyssa and I try and seek justice in everything that I do. It's heartbreaking to see how some people have to live, but I'm encouraged by what Alyssa said. We don't have to save the whole world because Jesus already did that. But we are called to do what we can and we can make a difference one person at a time. Let's break into our small groups and see what this looks like in our stories.